Hello Internet, welcome to day six, Howling Six, the freaks, the final day of my Howling movie, a day, what? Yeah, I know that there are, at the time of recording, eight Howling movies. Uh, I've made an executive decision, I did so on day one, you can check, re-watch the, the Howling video, the first one, day one, I made an executive decision that I was only going to watch the first six. I've read some of the online reviews of Howling 7, what's it called, New Moon Rising, and do you know what, I just don't want to put myself through that kind of torture, it's universally loathed, and Pretty much every account I've read said that there is more line dancing in it than there is werewolf action. I'm not going to do that to myself. I've seen Halloween Reborn maybe a couple of years ago. And frankly, it's, it's the howling repackaged into a tween friendly twilight crowd baiting um, piece of garbage and I'm not touching it with a barge pole. So, Howling 6, The Freaks. I want to end on a high and, you know, relatively speaking, we will end on a high. That, by the way, that's not a werewolf. Ooh, <laughs> intriguing. That's your werewolf. What the heck is that then? Let's find out. Some people say online he looks more like a, a big ugly caveman than a werewolf, but he's definitely a werewolf. We got a glimpse of him earlier. There he is. There's, there's no doubting that um, he's a little more humanoid uh, than canine, but for good reason. Um, along with uh, the shape changes in Howling 3, this is our take on uh, a sympathetic werewolf the werewolf character that we're supposed to empathize with and feel sorry for. Um, nothing new there. This goes all the way back to Universal's The Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr., uh, where we're, uh, the narrative expects us to empathize with Lawrence Tolbert and the curse he's got. So we follow a cursed character here. He's a, he's a drifter traveling from town to town, and he makes his way to a dust bowl city that's slowly leeching townsfolk uh, and is dying and a few days after him as he drifts into town to try and find work uh, and uh, a bed for the night uh, a carnival follows and comes into town and <clears throat> I really dig this movie it's not perfect this one's interesting it's visually interesting. It's got stuff going on. First sighting and transformation in the first for the series. Our first sighting is also the transformation scene about 40 minutes into the movie. Unlike <laughs> Howling 5, which I loathed, if you haven't seen that video. It's quite a funny video if I do say so myself. I shouldn't say that myself. We, get, we actually get a werewolf in this movie for a start and we get a transformation scene. You know, it's, it's, it's not the, the, the full on of the howling or American werewolf in London, but, you know, on a micro budget, uh, you know, direct to, to video, we, we see enough. I think we see uh, fingernails sort of tear themselves up as claws pop out underneath them. Uh, we see he does some really good contorting. He's obviously got something strapped to his back that makes it look like his, the, but his spine's breaking and, and, and realigning. And we get the classic back of the shirt tearing down the seam and there's hair underneath, um, which instantly reminded me of uh, the Hulk TV series from when I was a kid. The Hulk, the Banner always used to, the, his, he always used to ruin his shirts when he turned into the Hulk. Uh, we see a foot elongating and turning more canine and um, and some facial prosthetics. And this guy, although we've seen his face a minute ago, 
one of the things I really like when he's in his full wolf form, although some people don't get on with the fact that he's got a more human face, but he needs that. He needs to convey emotion. And he really does. The, the script demands it. There's no way he could look like a, a dog in this and, and, and have that work. But when he's in it as a, as a payoff to that, you know, take with one hand, give with another. When he's in his full werewolf form, he's really stacked. His torso is huge and he's tall. And the reason he's tall is because he's on, I guess, sort of stilt kind of things because his, his legs are the curved uh, leg joints of, of a dog, of a wolf. So uh, his knees sort of seem to bend backwards and the like. And do, you, do you get what I'm saying? So there are a, a few full body shots of him where he's, he's walking on stilts and it looks like he's got canine legs, lupine legs. I, I love that kind of design. I love that in a werewolf. So thumbs up all round. You know, if you're dealing with a, if you're dealing with a low budget monster movie, all I really ask is that you give me monsters. Uh, Howling 5 gave me absolutely nothing. This movie gives you monsters. And um, the circus comes into town and you get, you get some, some more freaks as well. You get um, uh, the crocodile boy. Excellent, excellent facial makeup there for uh, a guy who's obviously afflicted with a skin disease who is an act in the, in the freak show. And uh, there's another monster at the end of the movie as well. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to give it away. He was that guy on the front of the cover but uh, it's good you get your monsters money worth in this movie I think for me for what it is for what you expect from it I actually think it pays you you get kills in this the, the movie starts off with a kill scene and there's a woman running through the woods at night and the cameras following her and the cameras the point of view of the well, werewolf, we suppose, and I thought, oh, here, here we go again, more camera POV, save on special effects. But don't worry, there are kills later on. The first kill, unfortunately, is a chicken that gets its head bitten off. Not for real. One guy gets bitten and killed by... Don't want to give it away. <laughs> But yes, again, you see, you see, sort of body. There's a there's a, a body torn open. I don't want to tell you who that is either. It's not a gore fest, but uh, like I say, compared to part five, which just consisted of <laughs> werewolf hands yanking people off screen, left, right, and centre, some people get killed by some creatures in this movie. To me, watching the film, there, there, are, there are large echoes when the circus comes into town of uh, Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes, but it's quite surprising that so few horror movies have kind of used the circus comes to town because it's such a great thing to play with. You've got the acts, you've got all the... Uh, interrelationships with the people behind the scenes that they, they put on a facade for each town they come to you know by their very nature they put on an act and then what's behind the curtain what's behind the stage what goes on behind the scenes and then you add a sort of freak show element to it as well and you can always introduce interesting things to look at and interesting characters to, to follow and what you've got in this, whereas in Howling 5, when the plot was sort of ticking over, it was just groups of people wandering around um, corridors. In this, while the plot's sort of ticking over, you're with people at the circus, you're with people in the small town. Interesting characters, characters that seem to have a life to them, that you want to know more about. As a quick aside, if you like the sort of freak showish carnival meets supernatural and you haven't seen it i strongly recommend you watch uh, both seasons of a show called carnival it is it's really really good fun you'll you'll thank me for pointing you towards it and then you'll hate me when you get to the end of series two and they cancelled it before the story uh, got anywhere near being told in full. So be warned, it's a show that is superb but was cancelled before its time. So 
yeah, Howling Six, The Freaks. I, I like it. It it delivers on the premise. That's that's all I want. It's a werewolf movie that's got a werewolf in it. It's got interesting characters in it. It's got a plot that I was I was engaged with. Okay, when Ian, our, our, our drifter, comes to town, there's a little bit too much time spent on him doing his handyman work at the start, but I suppose for a sort of micro-budget horror film, you've got to pad... You've got to pad out a little bit. The padding was certainly a hell of a lot less noticeable in this than it was in, in Howling 5 and Howling 4. There's, there's no two ways about it. The ending of this is very weird and very abrupt. It does kind of just end. And I'm pretty sure that the scriptwriter, who's not named on the back, so I can't name check him, IMDB is your friend, did have plans for a sequel that sort of never came to pass. There's a little tease of a, ca uh, of a character from Howling 5 in it, nothing more than a cameo. And it does end with... I won't say a cliffhanger. It does kind of just end. You know, like, what? Why are they just just they're just running off? Okay, that's a bit weird. And what about the curse? Is the curse lifted, or is are they infected? And well, I think there was an idea for us to, to to follow that up in the next film. It, it never came to pass. Uh, Howling Seven, the one that did come to pass. It's back in the hands of uh, Clive Turner, the man uh, responsible, the producer of Howling 4, co-script writer of Howling 4. Um, the, he was freaking producer and script writer for Howling 5, and apparently in, in 7 he's... From what I hear, he's, he's cobbling together footage from, from, from his other films that, that didn't make final cut and... Uh, trying to craft a story out of that and, and, and stuff like that never, ever, ever results in a good film. So I'm just not going to watch it. If <laughs> I should rate the Howling movies, but I, I didn't prepare for that and it's just occurred to me that maybe I should have done some preparation for this. Do you know what? I mean, it's fairly obvious if you watch the videos how I, how I rank them. And this was a nice surprise ending for me. I'll, I'll admit, I, I, I bought this and was expecting to hate it and I thought, oh, since I've got it and I've got the howling, I'll, I'll get the ones in between and that's why I came up with the idea for this. Uh, I, I, I th thought this looked dreadful and <laughs> bizarrely, it's, it's not, it's one of the least dreadful ones out there. Still here for the spoiler. Okay, good. Well, get this, that weird ass looking creature there that in the movie sort of shiny and, and, and purpley sort of like a, a beetle's shell it's a vampire <laughs> there's a vampire in this the guy that, that runs the circus is the one that's going from town to town killing people not our hero thinks it's 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 him uh, potentially um, and he's tracking the circus to take revenge on the vampire. So we get some, we do get a little vampire versus werewolf at the end of this movie. How cool is that?